Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about um, ordinary differential equations of a specific type. It's called homogeneous. Um, I have introduced the concept of homogeneous um, uh, differential equations in the introductory lecture and today we will just solve a couple of problems. Um, I have uh, three different equations which uh, I will try to solve and uh, basically uh, I think it would be a, a good demonstration of what is actually homogeneous equations are and, uh, and how to solve them. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics uh, presented on unizor.com. Um, uh, if you are watching this lecture from YouTube directly or from some other website, um, I do suggest you to switch to unizor.com because um, every lecture has detailed notes, so you can just read it as a textbook, and uh, certain topics have exams, so you can test yourself. Uh, the site is completely free and there are no advertisements, so basically um, it's easier to use it than anything else. All right, so first of all, um, let me just repeat uh, what exactly homogeneous ordinary differential equations are. Well, first of all, ordinary differential equations of the first order, that's something like this. So we have some kind of a function which involves argument, function, and its first derivative. So we are talking about first order differential equations. Now, um, the homogeneous uh, uh, differential equations have the following property. If instead of x you will put lambda comes, uh, times x, where lambda is just any real number not equal to zero, and instead of y you substitute the same lambda times y, do not touch the first derivative. You will get exactly the same function. Well, simply speaking, lambda would cancel each other. Well, an example, for instance, like y uh, derivative is equal to y divided by x. Well, if you will multiply lambda by x and by lambda, lambda will cancel out and it will be exactly the same function. Right? So the function of this type is y divided by x minus y equals to zero, right? And if you will substitute lambda, uh, uh, y and lambda x, this function is exactly the same as this function because lambda is cancelling out. Another example, 3y plus 2x equals x times. Um, y derivative. If you substitute uh, lambda x instead of x and instead of x and lambda y instead of y, lambda 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 will, will, will cancel each other so you can just factor it out and it will be the same. So these are examples of homogeneous uh, equations. Now uh, homogeneous equations can be solved using a specific technique which I'm going to uh, talk right now and uh, again I did mention it before this is uh, this is just a repetition so if you have some kind of a um, equation uh, of this type and this equation has this property of being homogeneous then the suggested methodology is let's find let's substitute instead of function y function z times x so y is a function of x and z is a function of x but now by substituting this and substituting this now this is a product so it's the derivative of the first one times the second plus derivative of the second which is 1 times the first. So that would be my y derivative. So if I will substitute uh, this and this in case my function is 
my, my equation is uh, homogeneous, that would allow to separate um, z from x and solve using the method of separation. Um, and then, as soon as you find z, then you can find y from this, right? So, here are my three examples which I would like to use and to demonstrate this particular property, this particular technique of how to solve differential equations which are homogeneous. Now, my first is x times y derivative equals x times sine of y over x plus y. So first we have to check that this is a homogeneous um, differential equation. So if I will substitute instead of x, lambda x, and instead of x, lambda x, and instead of y, lambda y, you see that we can very easily cancel lambda out. So this is a homogeneous equation. Okay, since it's a homogeneous equation, by the way, I didn't really put it here, lambda and lambda, it will also cancel out. Forgot to do it. So lambda here, 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 and here, and here. So, but all, la all lambdas cancel out. So it's a homogeneous equation. Now, how to solve it? Okay, this is a suggested methodology. Now, if I will substitute this to this, what will happen? Um, to make my life easier, let me just divide this by x, so I will have my original equation can be rewritten as this. And it's easier because y divided by z is x. Now, let me just mention here, I divided by x. Well, obviously this function is not defined as x is equal to zero, right? So, but we, when we are trying to solve differential equations, we are not as, uh, I would say, rigorous with dividing by something which contains an unknown x, etc., because we are not looking for the roots of the equation in algebraic sense. We are talking about the function, and if this function is not defined at x is equal to zero, I can just divide by x is equal to zero, because this function is also not defined if x is equal to zero. So that's why we're not really paying attention to these nuances, and in the future probably I will skip all these uh, considerations. Now this is easier because y divided by x is z, right? So what do I have is, so instead of y derivative I have to substitute this, equals to sine of z plus z, right? Now, z cancels out and what do I have? I have z uh, derivative which is dz by dx times x is equal to sine of z. Looks very simple, right? So I can separate dx and x goes to the right, sine z goes to the left and my final um, equation in terms of z and x is dz divided by sine z equals dx divided by x. So, what's my next step in this case? How can I define, how can I find z in this particular case? Well, obviously I integrate it to get rid of the differentials, right? And hopefully I will have some kind of a function on the left of z and some kind of a function of the uh, of the x. Um, and from their equality I can I can or cannot find z, doesn't really matter, but at least I will not have differentials, right? Okay. So now on the right it's easy, right? On the right it's basically logarithm of absolute value of x. Sometimes I skip absolute value and just say that, okay, let's just forget about negative x. 
let's consider the function which is defined only for positive x and then I don't have to have this little complication like um, absolute value well sometimes not doesn't really matter now this is the difficult part how can I find this particular integral okay yes that's not easy and now let me just think about it um, sine uh, uh, under the integral is always good if it's also uh, if under integral you also have a cosine which can be brought into the differential right because the cosine is the derivative of sine and that's how I can get rid of the sine well I can actually introduce cosine here um, um, by doing the following integral dz now sine of z I will represent as sine of z over 2 times cosine of z over 2 because this is a double angle right this is a sine of z over 2 plus z over 2 right so that would be sine of z so that's the same thing now I have the cosine However, I have it in the denominator. I would like to have it in the numerator because then if I had it here, I can combine cosine z and dz into differential of sine of z, right? Or z, do, or z over 2, doesn't matter. I mean, what matter is, it's, it's in the wrong place. So what should I do? Well, what I can do is I can actually multiply cosine z over 2 and multiply the bottom cosine over z right now i have this cosine which i can combine with gz to get something like differential of z um, now this two i can combine to z and i will have g of z over two right this z and this gz and this two it's a differential of z over two times cosine of z over two so this is good. This is differential of sine over sine of z over two, and now I have sine of z over two and cosine square, which I can also uh, express as one minus sine square z over two. So now I have everything uh, expressed as sine. It's d of sine z over two right divided by sine of z over 2 times 1 minus sine z over 2 so what do I do in this case so you see everything is uh, sine square so everything is expressed in terms of sine so what people do in in this particular case obviously we have to just substitute my sine of z over 2 as t and my integral is integral of dt divided by t times 1 minus t square or dt dt uh, t 1 minus t 1 plus t right 1 minus t squared is 1 minus t times 1 plus t so I can actually take this integral and this is not very difficult all I have to do is whenever I have some kind of a polynomial which is represented as a product of uh, first degree um, uh, polynomials t 1 minus t and 1 plus t it's always um, good to represent it as sum of this thing so this can always be represented in this thing where a b and c some kind of coefficient uh, coefficients how can I uh, find these a b c well this is easy Well, if I will 
take this to a um, common denominator, which is this one, I will have a times 1 minus t times 1 plus t. So it's a times 1 minus t squared plus b times t times 1, uh, 1 plus t plus c, t, and 1 minus t. And this should be equal to 1. Now, this is what? a minus a t squared plus b t plus b t squared plus c t plus minus. minus c t squared equals to 1. So what does it mean? It means that my coefficients are t squared. What do I have at t squared? I have minus a plus b. Coefficient at t would be b t. So it's b plus c. Oh, by the way, I forgot I forgot c t squared, sorry. Mm, minus c. Okay. Now t would be b plus c. And the free is a. Now, and this should be identical for any t, which means this should be equal to 0, this should be equal to 0, otherwise my dependency on t would be substantial and a should be equal to 1. If a is equal to 1, so yeah, I, I will get minus 1 plus b minus c is equal to 0 and b plus c is equal to 0. So I have a system of two um, linear equations with uh, two variables which can be easily solved. And that's how I will get my a, b, and c. I mean, a I have already got. So b, c, b minus c is equal to 1, b plus c is equal to 0. So b is equal to minus c. Going to here, minus c minus c is equal to 1. c is equal to minus 1 half. And b is equal to 1 half. And a is equal to 1. Okay, so I've got the representation I have my integral of uh, a it's this dt b is this Uh, and c is minus one half. Uh, t. So each one of them is easily taken. Now t, by the way, is sine of z over 2. Remember this, right? So, each one is, this is logarithm t, this is uh, minus logarithm t, uh, logarithm by minus t, and this is, again, minus logarithm 1 plus t. Now I can use absolute value or whatever. All right, so basically, where t is this. So basically, I have expressed this left part as the function of z. And the right part is logarithm x. Unfortunately, I cannot really resolve this, at least not easily, um, for z as a function of x in this particular case. Because this is logarithm and under the logarithm I have sine of z divided by 2 and this is all this is equal to this integral which is 
logarithm of x. It's not easy, all right? So in many cases, solution is basically um, retained in this not exactly clear format as y is equal to y of x as a function, like in this particular case. Well, I, I'm actually indirectly defining uh, my y as uh, some kind of a function which satisfies certain equation. f of x, y equals to zero, for instance, if I cannot resolve it for, for, for y. <coughs> and, and this is unfortunately an example of such kind of a thing. Um, uh, yes, I can probably use this um, as an exponent. Um, so I will have a product of t times 1 minus t times 1 plus t is equal to x. But still, there will be lots of signs in between signs of this function, I mean. So it's not easy to resolve it for, for, for z and consequently for y. So in this case, we just you know, retain it as is. Um, I think my other two examples are uh, a little bit more um, resolvable, if you wish. They, they do have some final product. But this, you know, it looks like a simple thing, right? And yet, the result is, unfortunately, kind of very difficult to resolve for function y to get an exact explicit uh, expression for y as a function of x. It happens. But as an example, I think it's just good. Um, next. So what's my next? Next looks a little bit more complicated, but the result will be a little bit more resolute. y minus x, y divided by x in the power of x is equal to e to the power of y. Okay, so first of all, we have to check if this is um, the heterogeneous equation. Well, within these brackets everything is obviously heterogeneous because I can always represent it as y divided by x minus y and if I will substitute uh, y lambda instead of lambda uh, instead of y and lambda x instead of x these will cancel out. But how about these guys? Well, why don't we raise both sides into the power of 1 over x? One over x. What happens? Whenever you are a to the power of b to the power of c is equal to a to the power of bc. Remember this, right? So if this, this is a to the power of x and then to the power of 1 over x, I will have a to the power of x times 1 over x, which is 1, right? So I will have just this. So on the left, I will have just this. On the right, I will have e to the power of just multiplication, y divided by x. So now I also have this y divided by x, right? So whenever I am replacing y and x with lambda y and lambda x, these lambda will also cancel each other. So it is heterogeneous, uh, homogeneous, so, sorry, homogeneous equation. All right, so let's try to solve it now. Homogeneous equation, and I will try to solve it from this latest incarnation, because it looks simpler. Now, why does it look simpler? Because y over x would immediately be z, right? So it's z minus derivative of y is this. So I will subtract zx minus z. And it's equal to e to the power of z. So this cancels out. 
and I have dz by dx equals minus e to the power of z, right? Minus, I put it on the right side. Or let's divide both uh, sides by e to the power of z or multiply by e to the power of minus z and I will have dz e to the power of minus z is equal to minus dx divided by oh sorry I didn't put it should be x here divided by x and this is easier to integrate explicitly because the integral of this is minus logarithm of absolute value of x. Integral of this is minus e to the power of minus z. All right? The derivative of this is minus, and then derivative of e to the pi power of minus z, which is e to the power of minus z times derivative of minus z, which is another minus, so it will be plus. So I have this particular equation. Am I right? I think I missed a sign somewhere. Minus this x. Uh, so this is z x is equal to minus e to the power of z so dz per dx times x is equal to minus z okay dx divided by x e to the power of minus z and I integrate this yeah, seems to be fine. Seems to be fine. So, we can get rid of this. So, minus z is equal to... I have to logarithm both sides. Logarithm of logarithm of absolute value of x. Or z is equal to minus and y is equal to zx, that is minus x times logarithm of logarithm of x. It's kind of an ugly function, but it's an explicit solution. Well, obviously there is a constant somewhere which I um, kind of ignored, so it's probably here. And if I do this constant, if I will uh, yeah, I have to add it here probably as part of the solution. Okay, anyway. Um, what's most important? Most important is that using this substitution, y is equal to zx, I'm converting that ugly equation that I had before into another equation where I can separate um, function from its argument. Okay? And finally I have the third example. And I don't think that it's resolvable explicitly, but nevertheless. Okay, x times y times y derivative is equal to x plus y square. Okay, now what can I do about this? Well, first of all, is it uh, homogeneous? Well, yes, because if I will replace x with lambda x and y with lambda x, I will have lambda square here, and here I will also have lambda and lambda square. It will be lambda square outside of the parentheses, so lambda square and lambda square would cancel each other out. So it is homogeneous. Okay, now, y is equal to zx. So what do I have in this case? And y's derivative is equal to z 
x plus z. All right, so I have x times y, which is zx, times y derivative, which is this, equals to x plus y. It's x plus zx. So x can be uh, factored out, so it will be x squared, 1 plus z squared, right? So this x squared goes out, and what do I have? I have z times z uh, derivative times x plus z squared is equal to uh, if I will open this, it's 1 plus 2z plus z squared. And z squared also goes out. So what do I have? <coughs> I have z divided by 1 plus 2z. If I will go to down. dz is equal to dx divided by x, right? x goes to the right, to the denominator. dx used to be here. It goes to numerator. This goes to denominator. And z and dz is a numerator. So, all I have to do now is take these two integrals. Now, this one again, it's easy. It's logarithm. Now, how about this one? It's the same kind of a problem which I had before, which I can resolve by representing this as a sum of two simpler fractions. It's one half, two z, right? Instead of z, I need two z plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2z plus 1 right that's the same thing now this is equal to 1 half of this divided by this is 1 minus 1 divided by 2z plus 1 and now my integral is very easy to take because it's equal to integral 1 half minus uh, uh, 1 divided by 2, 2z two plus 1. And I can actually do it as two different integrals, dz and dz. Each one is easy to take. So this one is dz. Uh, it's uh, 1 half z. This one is minus. Um, I need, well, this is what? 4z plus 2, right? 4z plus 2. So I need 1 quarter to get 4z here plus 2. So I will have minus 1 quarter logarithm of 2z for no 4z plus 2 4z plus 2 and it's equal to this integral which is logarithm of x plus c all right so again this is something which is not easy to uh, to resolve for z because you see this is a combination of logarithm and, and polynomial function of the first degree but nevertheless it allows you to represent y and x in one bigger formula so instead of z we can always put Instead of z, we can always put y divided by x, and that would be an expression which combines together x and y, which defines the function y as a function of x, not explicitly, but still defines. 
Okay, basically these are examples I wanted to to present to you. Um, a couple of lessons. Well, first of all, differential equations do not necessarily um, get resolved in explicit function like y is equal to some kind of function of x. Not necessarily. Sometimes we have to be satisfied if we have just some kind of a functional dependency which is not explicitly represented as a formula. Well, which is still better than original differential equations. So we still have to um, appreciate the fact that we um, got rid of the differential uh, equation and came up with just a functional dependency between x and y. And then obviously there are numerical ways of addressing the problem of what exactly my y if my x is this. Uh, because all these um, uh, equa e equations which are not explicitly defining y as a function of x can be numerically um, uh, defined and numerically resolved. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much. And uh, I do suggest you to, you to look at the Unisor um, uh, text for this lecture, notes for this lecture. Uh, it's a little bit more in more details maybe than whatever I was just presenting to you because I wanted to, to convey the idea of how to um, approach homogeneous differential equations. And there are some more details maybe in the text. That's it. Thanks very much and good luck.